The world's biggest boomstick lights up. The FAA asks, will you be my neighbor? Dragon relocates at the nest. Viasat fails to prevent more Starlink launches. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On Monday evening, the world's largest rocket booster, B3, came to life for the very first time. First test duration, firing of three Raptors on super heavy booster. But depending on progress with booster four, meaning if construction is slow enough, we might have time to try a nine engine firing with this third booster. At least two of the three engines have been removed since the static fire. B4 will be the first one to lift an upper stage starship to orbit in the coming months. That starship, SN20, is currently being assembled in the mid bay up the road from the launch site. And the GSE-3 tank was kicked out today to allow the stacking of SN20 to resume. It's the first starship to have heat shield tiles fully covering its fins. The curved pieces are my favy. Elon says flight tests showed that they can make Starship's body flaps narrower and lighter. Good call, RGV. But to get to orbit, a launch tower is needed, some assembly required. Said tower had its eighth segment installed on Sunday as well, but look out, SpaceX is looking to go even bigger. A ninth section is currently under construction. Maybe they decide to build an elevator to Mars instead. It's very, uh, big. Yeah, it's pretty good size, it's good size. The plan as it currently stands is to also use the tower to catch the booster. It appears the arms to make it happen are also being built at the moment. Elon twats some of these design trades are still open, but will be resolved soon. Because the FAA correctly anticipates an uptick in Starship activities in South Texas, as well as space tourism operations with Blue Origin in West Texas and Virgin Galactic in New Mexico, the agency has opened up a Houston Space Safety Office to increase their oversight of the area, hopefully without getting in the way. Some quick Dragon news, the astronauts of Crew-2 had to move their car on Wednesday morning. It was parked in a spot reserved for Boeing's Starliner capsule, which is expected to launch on July 30th. We'll have to wait and see if it actually makes it to the space station though. Last time it had to turn around after making orbit, the wrong orbit, due to a software issue. And a couple months back, we discussed Viasat's attempts to prevent SpaceX from placing any more Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit by suing the FCC. Well, a three-judge panel at the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia just ruled in SpaceX's favor. Quote, Viasat has not satisfied the stringent requirements of a stay pending court review, end quote. However, they did grant Viasat a motion to expedite their appeal. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. After making an 82-year-old grandma walk up 20 flights of stairs and allowing a teenage boy to aggressively ring their bell, Blue Origin encapsulated Jeff and friends before switching on their phallus-shaped thrust toy and letting it loose to ever so slightly penetrate Carmen. The first stage virus made an aesthetically pleasing landing on the pad, and the capsule reached 5Gs during its descent, deploying shoots bra and firing retro jets at the last second for a padded landing. During their post-flight conference, Wally Funk showed her appreciation for the free ride to space by giving their experience her honest review of two stars. And we went right on up and I saw darkness. I thought I was gonna see the world, but we weren't quite high enough. I just wish it had been longer because I have been in space before, I'm not in space, but uh, up in that area and could do a lot more rolls and, and twists and so forth. But there was not quite enough room for all four of us to do all those things. It was great. The important thing is all four crew members got their astronaut wings, not from the FAA, but from the company itself that made their own pins. 21st century first world problems. I guess there's been some heated debates going on about what qualifies someone to be called an astronaut as opposed to commercial astronaut or astro tourist. The FAA has its own standards and nomenclature as does everyone in the public. My members know where I stand on the issue. You're not a real astronaut until you poop in space. The nice thing about it is you don't have to go to orbit. If you go up on a suborbital flight and crap your pants at Apogee, you're an astronaut in my book. 
I have more thoughts to share on this topic, not the poop thing, the Blue Origin presser. So if you'd like to hear them, click the video on your screen. There's also a link in the description below. Thank you so much for tuning in. I also want to thank the supporters of the channel for having my six. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.